What's going on you guys? We are back again with another video. You know what? We're just coming off of a of a couple of back-to-back -back expos and we had some really good expos. Thank you Sacramento. We had a really good show up there even though it was a very long drive but um, it was worth it. We had a good time. We had a good show. Uh, moved a lot of animals and everything was really good. So we've been talking to a lot of hobbyists, new hobbyists, veteran hobbyists, and all these, um, you know, everything in between. And the one thing that I'm realizing is that there is a, there's a lack of something on YouTube. There's a lack of something in the hobby. And what that is, is the lack of obscurity, the lack of the true exotics, the real obscure stuff that I've always specialized in and I'm always saying it. So as you guys know, for those of you that watch the channel, you saw us do some uh, Malaysia and Indonesia unboxing videos. So today I want to highlight some of those animals that are settling in really well. And I've just basically been, you know, deploying all the stuff that I've learned over the years in regards to feeding and acclimation. And it pretty much is all coming together quite well. Now I have some really obscure animals, animals that would stump even the most popular YouTuber that you could come up with. A lot of these guys have no idea what I'm doing, what I'm working with. They just have no clue. Um, so I'm gonna be that guy that uh, highlights all this weird stuff. Some of you have seen it before, most of you have not. So let's get started. This first animal, this is Lycodon subsinctus. It's from Malaysia. They get about 36 inches, about three feet long max. So this animal is kind of coming up on its, probably the full, full range of where it's gonna to top out at. Now as babies, they're heavily banded, black and white. But this animal, um, well, all of them as they grow, they start to lose those bands. And um, they're just a really, really cool snake. Usually this snake is quite calm, but I guess because we have the lights on it and everything is acting up a little bit. Um, this one has been really easy for me to acclimate. This one has just been eating fuzzy mice. That's a real, real simple thing. It's a, it's a real easy, uh, straightforward animal, unlike a lot of the other ones that I'm gonna be showing you. Super cool. I'm super excited to have this animal and I'm super happy that it's established and doing well. So this is another one that came out of that same shipment from Malaysia. This is also Lycodon. This one is just a hatchling or it was a hatchling when it first arrived but it's doing quite well and it's actually growing a little bit. This one is Ephraenis, Lycodon Ephraenis. Is very very similar to the other one, um, especially as babies. I would imagine that they look really really similar, but I believe this one is not the same species. So this one, this one's grown quite a bit, and I tried different prey items on this one, but of course because the snake is so darn tiny, I'm very limited on what I can try. So at this point, it's house gecko tails. And um, I just put them in there and, uh, and it eats them, no problem. So that's gonna be enough to get this animal up to size to where then the menu can start to expand a little bit and I can start offering some other things. But the animal is doing fantastic. It's, um, it's feeding and growing and everything is, uh, is coming along quite well. And I'm very, very pleased. So another very, very rare animal in the hobby. Uh, also rare to see in the wild. They're just um, just very obscure, kind of off the wall snake. There's not a lot of them out there. Or if there are a lot of them out there, they're just not easily seen. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of what's going on with this guy, but he's doing awesome. So really, really cool animal. So here's another obscure one. This is a mock viper. Um, and he acts like a viper because he bites everything. He's now focused on my face, so I want to make sure that he can't reach my face. I think I'm out of range. But he, he strikes at everything, and he goes right into a chew. So 
a um, little bit of a rambunctious guy. Yeah, nevertheless, I do love this guy. I think he's really cool. He's tracking tracking my hand, um, but very Viper-like. Um, so far, I've offered him a lot of different prey items, and at this point, it's house geckos like clockwork. So I'm just happy that he's eating and that he's established. And so I have an ample supply of house geckos, so I've just been feeding him house geckos. So I'm all good with that, and, um, and I would definitely consider this animal established. So very cryptic, looks like a, looks like a piece of wood. And, um, and like I said, that attitude is something else, but it's a very small snake. They don't get very big and, um, just so rambunctious, so, so irritable, but as long as he eats, I'm, I'm happy with that. So, you know, you guys, I'm always talking about these colubrids. A lot of the colubrids have very, very good eyesight. Not all of them, but some of them do. This Mog Viper has really good eyesight. I think you guys could see it tracked the camera. It's tracking me talking. It's now looking straight at my face, but uh, very, very alert and has some unbelievable eyesight, obviously, as you can see by the way it's acting. Very alert and very aware of its surroundings. And I haven't been bit yet, so I'm gonna put this guy away because I consider myself lucky. and right into his half coconut shell. And this is how I'm keeping them, by the way. Um, a lot of these really small snakes, they can escape from even the smallest gap. So um, you kind of really have to outthink them. Um, this particular rack unit, these boxes fit. Not ultra tight, but just tight enough to where even that little lycodon can't escape. So um, that's basically what's going on. So here's another weird one that I don't really enjoy handling, but I've learned that if you're very calm and slow and you don't actually grab the snake and you don't have a hold of them, they're, they're usually um, less apt to bite. But once they start squirming and getting all, all crazy, you need to let go because they will give you a bite. And for those of you that have been bit or sliced up by these kukri snakes, it sucks. Uh, very deep cuts. Um, they have their rear fang, and the fangs are like bladed, and those, those, the shape of that fang is used to slice through eggs, mostly reptile eggs. And uh, man, it, they, they use that dentition so well when they do a defensive bite as well. But this is Oligodon fasciolatus, uh, a little bit different than the purpuracens, has a different color. This one is one of the bigger ones that I've seen. The purpuracens is a bigger species and I'll sh I'm gonna show you those next. But um, this one's a little bit different. You can see the belly is really red and then the animal has kind of a reddish orange color up top. It's really, really pretty snake. Uh, this one has been very easy for me as well. This one has been eating um, pinkies, fuzzies uh, in multiples and then also eating um, raw chicken egg out of um, you know, like bottle caps and really small bowls. That's kind of been the, the trick that I've learned over the years for a lot of these kukris. You leave um, raw chicken egg kind of whipped up and you put it in a bowl and you just leave it. And, um, you, you know, they come and just suck it all down. You'll find that bowl completely empty in the morning, usually. And then sometimes I'll put some pinkies uh, mixed up in there and it, it kind of just vacuum it all down. But really, really pretty snake. And this one is quite obscure. It's starting to move a little bit now on me, but as soon as it's, if it starts squirming, it's going right into this tub. Because <laughs> I don't need to get bit. It's not my favorite thing. It's great for views, but again, like I have said before, I don't care about views. So that's what happens. They're real calm while you're calm, and then all of a sudden they are no longer calm, and they kind of get a little bit whippy. 
you don't want them to get away, of course, so you have to hold on to them, but that's when they'll swing around and get you. And I didn't get got, but so far I'm doing good with this uh, video session. But I'm going to move on. I'm going to show you guys some other stuff. So this one here, this one's Oligodon purpurassens. This one is from Indonesia. You can see the difference in the color. And this one is quite nervous, but I'm going to try my best. The belly is different. Uh, white belly, there's no red belly. And don't do it, buddy. So that is the other species of Oligodon. So quite different, not quite as colorful. And great eaters, these guys are eating raw chicken egg. Um, I have had a little bit of luck with pinky mice, but the eggs is pretty much, that's the, uh, that's the go-to on the kukris, that's the trick. All right, so here's another kukri species. This one is Oligodon signatus. I showed this one in the unboxing video from Malaysia, and I was really excited to get it. Didn't want to be too excited because it wasn't established yet, of course, at least not with me. So I'm always a little bit nervous when I get brand new species that I've never worked with, never had before in my possession. This one has shed. I know in the video before it had, it came when it was in blue. So this one has shed and I tried all sorts of stuff with this guy and I couldn't get it to feed. So I went ahead and did the, the raw egg trick just a little bit in an upside down bottle cap and it fed. Um, that I found that bottle cap completely empty the next morning. So that was fantastic. Now this snake has such a tiny head and that is really a limiting factor when it comes to um, you know offering food because it just baffles me that this snake has such a small head. I mean it, it's it has some length to it already, but it just has this tiny, tiny little head. So I wasn't sure how it was going to go. But um, regardless the size of the head, it can always slurp down some raw egg. And that's what it, it took to. So pretty excited about that. Um, the belly is pretty, pretty significant on this animal. Basically, the, the whole belly is bright pink. Really, really cool. And it hasn't offered to bite. It just seems real placid and real mellow, easygoing animal. So that's pretty much what we have going on with this one. But this is an ultra, ultra rare snake. So I was really, really happy when I got this guy to feed. And so now everything is going correctly. And I'm showing it to you guys. So you guys, this is Pataeus fusca. This is one of the very best of this species that I've ever had as far as establishing. Usually it's frog legs on these guys and I can sometimes get beyond the frog legs by scenting and stuff like that. This animal started that way and now it just eats whatever I put in there, whatever's moving. This is a super, super visual hunter and, it, and this guy will eat um, whatever I put in there. Um, sort of similar to the Carinata, except thinner, more keeled, and of course the, the color scheme is different. Um, but this, this animal is a, a bit more slender, uh, super, super visual, just a really interesting, interesting snake. So, and this is one of the um, Malaysian mangroves. This is the subspecies Melanota. Just a bigger, more beautiful, robust example of the mangrove snake. Um, most of the ones that come in will take rat pups right away. It's usually not a real big deal to get them to feed. They come in in really super good condition anyway. At least they do from my particular supplier in Kuala Lumpur. So, uh, you know, with that being said, you're already at a big advantage, or at least I am, because I'm the one that does the, um, the feeding trials and whatnot. So, um, that's usually how it goes. This particular one is eating rat pups, no problem. 
Uh, this is a male. I have a female counterpart to this one. It looks almost identical. It's just a little bit smaller in length. And uh, of course, right, that one refused rat pups. So I had to start playing all the different uh, uh, games, start to deploy all the different techniques. So um, the, uh, the first thing that I got lucky with was one frozen thawed frog leg left in at nighttime and uh, and she ate it. So then from there, we started to step it up a little bit. I then took a frozen thawed chick and I rolled it around in the, um, the frog water, as I call it. When you thaw out the frog legs, there's quite a bit of water that, um, that melts with it. So I used that for scenting. So I rubbed a, uh, a frozen thawed chick in that water and I left that in overnight and then the female ate that. So the next step will be to do the same thing with a rat pup, and then um, and then I think we're pretty much off to the races on that, uh, you know. And then that that completes a nice pair. So I'm going to show you guys some babies. I have some fresh hatchlings that are, um, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same feeding trials with those guys, but I'll talk about those when I have one of those out. So in here in my hands, this is a little hatchling melanota. So these, sometimes you get lucky and they'll take day old pinks, uh, pinky mice that is, as their first meal, sometimes. But that isn't always the case. So I've, I've had luck with two different methods. I've done uh, live pinkies scented with that same frog water. Um, so the frog scenting has worked on a couple of them. And then a couple others, I did the same technique but I used uh, house gecko for scenting. And that, uh, and that worked as well. So um, usually once they start uh, taking meals in that way, uh, they're pretty much off to the races and you're good to go. You can see that these little hatchlings are so young that the bands turn, uh, fade kind of to red banding in the back, the back end here, which is an uh, indication that they are very, very young, very fresh hatchlings. So having really good luck with these guys so far. So I got, uh, I think I have six of them that are um, have already taken at least one or two meals. So pretty much uh, off to the races on these guys as well. So the video on obscure animals would not be complete without Paradisi. Uh, this is the Paradise Flying Snake. I have three of these. They all appear to be girls and the, the feeding is really straightforward on the bigger ones. They're all eating on house geckos. And also I've been putting pinky and fuzzy mice in there and they've all pretty much been eating them. So they're all, um, they're all pretty easy, easy going and straightforward at this point. It's when they're tiny, that's, that's when they're a little bit challenging. Um, of course their size is a limiting factor on what you can offer for food. But uh, once they're this size, uh, kind of opens up the menu a little bit on these guys. So you're looking at uh, pinky mice and house geckos. This is pretty much the winner on these guys. So, Okay, you guys, that's it from DM Exotics. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed seeing something really different and off the wall. Wanted to close out the video with my Patias Carinata. This is my big buddy here. He came and he used to be really fired up and he didn't like me. And over time, we kind of got past our differences, and now he is one of the coolest of the big patias that I have here. So anyway, just trying to provide a little bit of value. Hope you guys got some feeding tricks out of what I was able to provide. Uh, open your eyes to some of the more obscure stuff that's out there, and some of the things that DM Exotics is doing. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. See ya.